The ability of the men's blood in the treatment group to fight prostate cancer in a Petri dish went up 800%. Amongst the controls that did not adopt the lifestyle changes, six men had to undergo treatment due to a rising PSA and or progression based on MRI. A prostatectomy is no joke. The prostate is a difficult, delicate surgery. Almost all men suffer from some degree of impotence and or incontinence as a result of the surgery. The current healthcare system isn't about health, wellness, and longevity. It's crisis intervention and revenue generation. Lee and I came together with this passion for better nutrition, proper exercise, the importance of sleep, and community yeah. engagement. I like to pretend I'm 25 years old, but unfortunately I'm not. In just a couple of months, I'm going to be 65 years old. I'm going to be a senior citizen. It's amazing how time marches on. The truth slowly becomes undeniable. Although my health is pretty good, I have some aches and pains, and I can't work out as hard or as with heavy weights as I could before. But the truth is, I'm getting older. And with advancing age, there's a number of diseases that become more common, one of which is prostate cancer. And depending upon which source you read, the average age of diagnosis is 65, exactly how old I'm going to be in just a couple of months. In the United States, there's 288,000 new cases diagnosed every year, with 35,000 deaths. The American Cancer Society says that one in eight men will have a diagnosis of prostate cancer at some time in their life. About 3% of men will actually die from prostate cancer. Should I just shrug my shoulders and forget about it? Should I just cross my fingers and hope for the best? Benny Gavi, MD, and Maya Elon answer that question for us in their book, Preventing Prostate Cancer, Reduce Your Risk with Simple Proactive Choices. In a nutshell, they recommend eating more plants, less animal products, maintaining a healthy body weight, and exercising. It sounds a lot like what we preach at Crisco & Company. The incident rates for prostate cancer vary a lot around the world. The United States has 20 times the rate of Southeast Asia and 50 times the rate of South Central Asia. Take note that the traditional Asian diet is highly plant-based, and countries with a lot of prostate cancer, like United States, New Zealand, and Australia, eat plenty of animal products. There appears to be a very large lifestyle component to prostate cancer. Amongst Japanese men that move to the United States, within four years, their risk of prostate cancer goes up 700%. A large Swedish study of twins showed that the risk for prostate cancer is 42% genetic and 58% lifestyle. Data combined from studies looking at a total of 60,000 men showed that men with optimal body mass index a reasonable diet that were physically active and didn't smoke, at 68% less risk of fatal prostate cancer compared to the men that didn't meet these healthy parameters. The American Cancer Society acknowledges the importance of lifestyle for prostate cancer prevention, focusing on diet, physical activity, and body weight. They suggest eating foods like whole grains, soy products, beans, and vegetables. They recommend limiting alcohol and doing at least 150 minutes of moderate exercise every week. If you can't spare an average of 22 minutes a day to exercise, there's something wrong with either your priorities or how you have your life structured. Grandma was right. Eat your vegetables. A large study with four years of data with 30,000 men showed that those eating the most veggies had a 40% reduction in risk for aggressive prostate cancer compared to those eating the least. The biggest risk reduction occurs with cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts, kale, cauliflower, collard greens, and cabbage. Cruciferous vegetables contain powerful cancer-fighting agents like sulforaphane and indole-3-carbinol. The humble tomato is a great cancer fighter. Tomatoes have lycopene, which give it its red color. Unfortunately, the number one source of lycopene in the American diet is pizza sauce. Nothing wrong with tomatoes and tomato sauce, but when it goes on pizza, pizza is not the healthiest option. Although demonized, soy is a powerful anti-cancer agent. Men needlessly worry about soy being feminizing. This is a myth that needs to be busted. It is true that soy has estrogen analogs called phytoestrogens. In other words, plant estrogens. Estrogen is a class of female hormones, but estrogens work very differently in the human body compared to phytoestrogens. The phytoestrogens block cellular estrogen receptors, 
and, and hence block the negative effects of real estrogens, decreasing the risk of both prostate and breast cancer. Soy is not feminizing unless you drink five liters of soy milk a day, but who's gonna do that? Strangely, men fear phytoestrogens in soy products, but they don't fear the copious real estrogens in animal products, especially dairy, which comes from pregnant cows. Testosterone and estrogen have a reciprocal relationship in the body. If you raise your levels of estrogen, your levels of testosterone go down. And when you consume conventionally raised uh, beef, those animals are treated with a powerful synthetic estrogen called xeranol, which causes the cattle to grow faster and fatter. And you ingest that when you're eating the meat. Dairy is, a, is at least as bad because the dairy is coming from cows that are pregnant. And those real estrogens are a threat to your masculinity, more so than the phytoestrogens in soy. Japanese and Chinese studies show that the consumption of soy can lower prostate cancer risk by 50%, and natto, which is a fermented form of soy, can lower it 75%. Tea is amazing and has powerful anti-cancer effects. Catechins are the active anti-cancer ingredient, with EGCG the most studied. A study from Japan showed that those drinking the most green tea reduce their risk of advanced prostate cancer by 50%. Green tea has been shown to reduce the progression from a precancerous form to cancer by 90%. I gotta start drinking green tea. So I've covered some things that uh, are good for preventing prostate cancer, but what do we need to avoid? Firstly, eggs. I know you didn't wanna hear that. The data is not super robust, but it's very consistent. Eggs consistently seem to increase risk. Two and a half eggs per week raises the risk of lethal prostate cancer by 81% compared to half an egg a week. And to think that I used to regularly eat three to four eggs every day. Hopefully, by eating a plant-exclusive diet, I'm mitigating that lifetime risk that I've accumulated. Next is dairy. You're not gonna to wanna to hear this either. Although not mentioned in the book, Preventing Prostate Cancer, T. Colin Campbell, PhD, Professor Emeritus of Nutritional Biochemistry for Cornell University, says that the link between dairy consumption and prostate cancer is at least as strong as the connection between smoking and cigarettes. The link seems to be highest for high-fat dairy. There are a couple of proposed mechanisms one is that by consuming dairy, you raise your body's level of IGF-1. That's insulin-like growth factor one. IGF-1 is great if you're a baby calf that needs to grow to 600 pounds within a year. But it's not something that you want as an adult because abnormal growth is really what cancer is. Another proposed mechanism is that the high calcium environment of milk may interfere with the anti-cancer function of vitamin D. Now you can get plenty of calcium from not consuming dairy by eating things like green leafy vegetables. Meat consumption has an image of manliness, but is this really justified? Here's something else that you don't want to hear. In 2015, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, a branch of the World Health Organization, classified red and processed meat as carcinogens. Both increase the risk of prostate cancer. They reviewed in excess of 800 studies to come to this conclusion. Prostate cancer is often treated with a radical prostatectomy. And the prostate gland is located in a part of the body that is very difficult to access surgically. It's located between the rectum, the bladder, and the pubic bone in a tight space. And it's wrapped around with nerves that are involved with maintaining urinary continence and potency. It's very difficult to resect. And a large percentage of men that get prostatectomies will end up impotent and incontinent. Yikes. I think I'll just stick with my veggie burgers and pass on the meat. There are a few different mechanisms involved in the carcinogenicity of meat. One is that when meat is cooked, especially at high temperatures, they uh, develop these heterocyclic amines, which are carcinogenic. The preservatives used for processed meat produced n nitroso compounds, which damage DNA, leading to cancer. Meat is also high in heme iron, which is carcinogenic and promotes the production of n nitroso compounds. And meat is also a factor in metabolic syndrome, which is a super common illness and is a risk factor for cancer. A measly 10 grams of red meat per day raises the risk for prostate cancer 10%. 10 grams isn't much, it's only about a third of an ounce. And a four ounce hamburger daily can raise your risk of prostate cancer by about 120%. Meat intake strongly correlates with the risk of prostate cancer, but also correlates with coronary heart disease and diabetes risk. A diet that is good for one aspect of health 
is good for all aspects of health. You probably aren't surprised to hear that being overweight increases the risk of prostate cancer, just as it increases the risk for so many things, from high blood pressure to Alzheimer's disease. If you're trying to lose weight, emphasize fruit, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, while limiting and ideally eliminating animal foods and processed junk. To lose weight, go easy on calorically dense foods like nuts, nut butters, avocados, dates, and definitely any type of oil. These are very calorie dense foods. In fact, oil is the most calorie dense food on earth at 4,000 calories per pound. Even on a plant-based diet, you can overconsume calories if you're not careful. Higher body mass index leads to higher death rates not only from cancer, but at least seven other types of cancer. These include colon, rectal, liver, gallbladder, pancreatic, kidney, and stomach cancer. An interesting study was published in the journal Prostate, comparing sedentary men to men exercising 60 minutes a day versus men doing 60 minutes a day of exercise and adopting a Pritikin diet plan, which is a very plant-centric diet. Blood from the sedentary control group, when dribbled on prostate cancer cells in a Petri dish, would kill 3% of the cancer cells. The exercising men's blood would kill 25% of the prostate cancer cells. And the blood from the men that both exercised and adopted the plant-based diet would kill 50% of the prostate cancer cells. So the point is, what you eat and exercise are both important. The American Cancer Society recommends 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise every week or 75 minutes of intense exercise every week. If you can't spare 22 minutes of your day to be active, then there's something really wrong with your life and your priorities. One study showed that men exercising vigorously for three hours per week reduced prostate cancer death by 61%. High levels of exercise have been shown to reduce risk for 13 of 26 studied cancers. Dr. Dean Ornish published an amazing study in 2005. He had 93 patients with prostate cancer and randomized them to either an intervention group or a control group. And these were men with either mild to moderate prostate cancer. The prostate-specific antigen was measured, and they had PSAs ranging between 4 and 10 nanograms to deciliter. 4 is the upper end of the normal range. They had Gleason scores of 7 or less. The Gleason score is a measure of how aggressive the cancer looks under the microscope. So these were mild to moderate severity cases. The men were then observed for one year. The treatment group included a vegan diet, including soy products, moderate exercise, yoga, meditation, and stress management. The diet was based on fruit, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and soy, as I mentioned. It was a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet. After one year, no one in the intervention group required any sort of treatment other than their lifestyle changes. And in fact, their PSA levels dropped 4%, which is amazing. The PSA is a level of the activity of prostate cancer in their body. The ability of the men's blood in the treatment group to fight prostate cancer in a Petri dish went up 800%. Amongst the controls that did not adopt the lifestyle changes, six men had to undergo treatment due to a rising PSA and or progression based on MRI. A prostatectomy is no joke. The prostate is a difficult, delicate surgery. Almost all men suffer from some degree of impotence and or incontinence as a result of the surgery. If I were an appropriate candidate, I think I'd pass on the prostatectomy and opt for the plant-based diet and optimized lifestyle. So most of what I've discussed today is from preventing prostate cancer. Reduce your risk with simple proactive choices. This book is an easy read. So if you have a prostate, I recommend that you check it out. And by the way, speaking of prostates, I recently read The Great Prostate Hoax, How Big Medicine Hijacked the PSA Test and Caused a Public Health Disaster. Suffice it to say that the PSA test was never intended by its discoverer, Dr. Richard Ablin, to be used as a screening test, but only as a test for following disease progression in men with known prostate cancer. Check out my YouTube short about this, and I'll be discussing this in greater detail in another video. Few doctors are going to tell you about the limitations of PSA testing, just as few doctors are going to tell you that mild to moderate prostate cancer can be treated with plants and lifestyle measures. As I have said before, you need to be the CEO of your own health care. Check out this video about exactly that. Are you going to change your diet to help prevent prostate cancer? Hey, thanks for watching. Do us a favor and hit like and subscribe. Also, post a comment. We want to hear what you have to say. And there's also a link there for our free whole food plant-based quick start guide.